Please be seated. I'd like to welcome you to St. Stephen's for worship this morning. My name is Russell Wall, and I'm the lay reader this morning. Uh, before we begin our service, I'd like to thank all of those, all of those people who are making this morning's service possible. Um, we, our scriptures are by Gloria Toulon this morning. Our sides person is supposed to be Bev McLean, but I'm sure we'll have someone back there. On Zoom, we've got Martin this morning, and our Zoom sides person is, is Marilyn Smart. On sound is Travis, and on music and the organ is Amy, so thank you to everyone. And our vocalists are Lois and Amy this morning. Um, on Altar Guild this week was Gloria, and for Sunday School this morning, we've got Erica, Krista, and Jeremy taking care of, of all our little ones in our congregation this morning. So I'd like to thank everyone for, for helping this all happen. Let us begin with our opening sentence. There is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness by the same, by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. And our general confession we will say together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty Father, who of thy great love to men didst give thy dearly beloved Son to die for us, grant that through his cross our sins may be put away and remembered no more against us, and that cleansed by his blood and mindful of his sufferings, we may take up our cross daily and follow him in newness of life until we come to his everlasting kingdom, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Instead of the bite of a nighty, we will sing hymn number 349, All People That on Earth Do Dwell. Please stand.
We will now have our first lesson. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. The first lesson is written in the fourth chapter of Jeremiah, beginning at the 11th verse and the 12th verse. At that time, this people and Jerusalem will be told, a scorching wind from the barren heights in the desert blows towards, toward my people, but not to winnow or to cleanse. A wind too strong for that comes from me. Now I pronounce my judgments against them. Verses 22 uh, to 28. <clears throat> my people's I don't know if it cut out or something can you still hear me okay my people are fools they do not know me they are senseless children they have no understanding they are skilled in doing evil they know not how to do good I looked at the earth and it was formless and empty and the heavens and at the heavens and their light was gone I looked at the mountains and they were quaking all the hills were swaying. I looked, and there were no people. Every bird in the sky had flown away. I looked, and the fruitful land was a desert. All its towns lay in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. This is what the Lord says. The whole land will be ruined, though I will not destroy it completely. Therefore, the earth will mourn, and the heavens above grow dark, because I have spoken and will not relent. I have decided and will not turn back. Here endeth the first lesson. Thanks be to God. We will sing Psalm 14 as responsibly as we usually do.
The second lesson is written in the first book of Timothy, in first, the first chapter beginning at the 12th verse. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the second lesson. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our gospel acclamation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to you, o Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of Christ. Our service will now continue with the, the Benedictus. And together, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, 
as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from all the hands that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. If I could have all the kids from the Sunday School come up, um, for our children's talk today. I didn't have one prepared, but I think I do have one in my mind that I would like to share with you today. So I'm just going to get my phone out here. My goodness, there's a lot of kids here today, and that is absolutely great and wonderful. How are you guys all today? Good. Good. So today's gospel reading was about losing things. Have you guys ever lost anything important? Yeah. Did you go and search for it? Yeah. Did you find it? No. Yes. A little bit of both. Well, I'd like to share a story with you today. I don't get to sleep in on Saturday and Sundays anymore. Why? Because we have a new puppy at our house. Yeah. What is his name? His name is Hunter. Hunter. Hunter, yeah, that's the name that the people where he was born, that's the name they gave him. And they wanted to know if I was going to change his name. And I said, you know what? I think Hunter is a really neat name because he's an English Springer Spaniel. And so they are actually a hunting dog. And I'll show you a picture of him here. I'll hold this up for everybody. This is Hunter on his way home to our house. He had a three and a half hour car ride to get to our house. And that little duck beside him is his toy that we got him for, for coming to our house. So as you can imagine, Hunter is full of energy and it's my job every morning. Weekdays aren't so bad because I go to work at six o'clock. So at 530, I take Hunter out and he gets to go bathroom and run around a little bit. And then he goes back into his kennel. But Saturdays, as if you ask Lois, she says, I'm a big fan of sleeping in on Saturdays, but I don't get to sleep in on Saturdays anymore because Hunter has to get up at six o'clock and he's got to go out to go bathroom. And usually I take him for a walk. And so yesterday morning and this morning, I got up at six and I got Hunter out and we went for a long walk and it was really a lot of fun. A long walk, probably about 45 minutes. I take him to the end of our property because he needs lots of exercise. And I'm training Hunter, so I'm training him to sit and to stay. Basically, I'm teaching his, him his manners. That's the first thing he's got to learn, his manners. So I'm teaching him to sit and to stay. And he's got those down pat pretty good already. And then I take him for his walk. And he usually has a ball. He goes running around in front of me. But every now and then I've noticed he gets way far away from me. And that's what he did yesterday morning and this morning. And so I played a little trick on him. I laid down in some brush and I hid. And what do you think Hunter did? He panicked. Yeah, I think maybe he did panic a little bit. Any other ideas? The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want him to wander too far away from me. 
especially because if he's a hunting dog, if you want him to flush up birds that you're trying to get, you want him quite close to you. So you don't want him half a mile away because that wouldn't do you any good if he found any birds that far away. So I lay down and I hid. And usually he turns around, looks, where's Russ? And then he comes bounding back as fast as he can. And the moral of that story is Hunter, just like in our gospel reading today, learned the value that if you lose something, you go and search for it. Hunter thought he had lost me, and so he had to go and find me. And the moral of that story for you guys is, just like Hunter, in our lives, we get carried away, and we go running off doing all a zillion different things that we find interesting, and all of a sudden, we stop. And we turn around, and who should we look for to go back to? Yes, you got it right on. Just like Hunter, we get carried away, but we have to stop and remember who loves us the most, who wants to take care of us. And so when we lose sight of God, we have to turn around and go back and find him. Just like Hunter always comes and finds me. So that's our story today, which kind of relates a little bit to the gospel reading. And I thought you guys would like to hear about my little buddy Hunter. And um, I, it's just a great little story. But the real thing you got to remember is, like Hunter came to look for me, when you guys get busy in your lives and you get a little too far away from God, you got to remember, you turn around and you go back to him. Now you can go to your Sunday school lesson. Great. We'll see you guys. New puppies are good for something, and I guess one of them is this coming up with the children's talk, so. I did not come up with this morning's sermon, though. This morning's sermon was written by Reverend Nancy Yee and graciously provided to us here at St. Stephen this morning, so um, let's begin. Nancy writes, I begin with this prayer. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. Thomas Merton wrote these words. His words capture well the sense of being lost, don't they? Today's gospel reading is about a lost sheep and the lost coin. Actually, it's part of a one larger parable in Luke chapter 15. What follows the lost coin parable is the one of the lost son. Jesus' stories in Luke 15 are about all the ways we get lost and all the ways we are found. Nancy Rockwell says, Lost is unforgettably lonely, a veil of confusion dense with thickets of regret, of regret. Lost is a wilderness. The Ox Oxford English Dictionary says, wilderness is a neglected or abandoned place, inhospitable and uncultivated. Being lost and wilderness doesn't sound like places we would want to be. But from God's viewpoint, it's where we may need to be. Jesus knows wilderness. Three of the four Gospels has him there. The Holy Spirit leads Jesus there, and the devil accosts him there. Is Jesus lost in the wilderness? The Bible doesn't say. He may feel lost, but he certainly is not lost. The Father sends him there, and the Father knows exactly where Jesus is. Jesus isn't lost, but he is in the wilderness. Wildernesses aren't always bad, spiritually speaking. In fact, wilderness and lostness are all part of the spiritual journey. We've all felt lost at some point in our lives. 
whether it's after a death of a loved one or when the kids leave home. Feelings of being lost can come from a broken dream or unfulfilled hope or during a prolonged illness. This feeling of being lost is part of being human and a part of God's plan for our lives, just as it was for Jesus. We tend to avoid feelings of lostness, loneliness, regret, or confusion. So we keep ourselves busy, distracted. We ignore our feelings. Afraid if we look at them, we would fall into a pit of darkness. Avoidance sometimes is a matter of survival. But if we avoid too long, our health will suffer, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical health. So sometimes God leads us into a sense of being and feeling lost. Why? Because God knows if we feel lost, we will seek him. And when we seek God with all our hearts, God will be found. That's a promise. In Jer Jeremiah 29, we hear these words. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not your harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore you. God knows when we feel at home with life and ourselves safe and secure, then we have no desire to seek God, nor the things of his kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all other things will be added to you. Matthew. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Isaiah. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Psalm 105. I found 100 verses on seeking God. Some say that to seek God is one of the most important aspects of our walk with God. Feeling satisfied with life and ourselves kills our desire to seek God. So those feelings of lostness, although uncomfortable, can be good in God's eyes. But one of the greatest temptations when we feel lost is to want to stay lost. We get used to the ache of it. We get used to the feeling of loneliness. We learn to live with regret and confusion. Being lost becomes our identity. The wilderness is our weedy field now. We tell ourselves we can't go home. Pastor Craig Barnes tells a very personal story of how his father fell into this temptation of staying lost. Barnes had a prodigal father. Barnes tells his story in his own words. My father left us when I was 16, and once he left, he never stopped running. Every time we tried to find him, he would only leave and dis disappear again. He died alone in a raggedy trailer park somewhere in the middle of Florida. A neighboring pastor who didn't know him spent two days trying to find his family, even though he did not know our names. My dad missed all the important events of his son's lives. 
graduations, weddings, birth of children, two ordinations, and both of our PhD ceremonies. He missed all of it. I prayed and prayed that he would return to us. I used to yearn for the day that he would show up in a congregation where I was preaching. My longing was for him at the end of worship, take my hand and say, good job, son, but he never came. At his funeral, I stared at the casket and wondered what happened to all of our prayers for him. Were they just lying around on the floor of heaven? When the service was over, my brother and I went to his little trailer in hopes of piecing together something about his life. That was when we received the greatest Christmas gift. Sitting on his kitchen table was a devotional journal in which he had written his prayers and thoughts about various Bible passages. I was relieved to discover that even if he had abandoned his family, he did not also abandon his faith. But then I came across a dog-eared, tattered page with the title, Daily Prayer List, at the top. The first two items on that list were my brother's name and my name. I will not, never understand the lonely madness that drove my father away from everyone who loved him. But I am so thankful to know that to his dying day, he never forgot us. He talked to God about us, even though for some reason he could not talk to us. There is enough grace in that to get me through. The grace was not that I received what I wanted. I did not find my father in time. The grace was that Jesus never lost him. And for me, the grace was that I then realized through all my prayers of those years of praying for my dad, I was speaking with the Heavenly Father who will never leave or, or forsake me. I like this story of lostness. I like it because this story shows me a God who knows where we're at. That nothing we've done, are doing, or will do can separate us from the love of God in Christ. No matter what happens in our lives, no matter what mistakes we've made and get stuck in, no matter where we are, God knows and cares. Barnes's prodigal father reminds me of Tolkien's words, all who wander are not lost. Some of us, like Barnes's father, want to stay lost, and that's okay. But some want to be found. They want to return home like the prodigal son. They long for a place to belong, a place to know they're loved. And that's where the church comes in. The church is meant to be a witness to God's kingdom, to be a place where the lost are found. But I think the only way we can be a church for the lost is for us to know our own lostness. When we're a people who don't admit to feelings of loneliness or regret or confusion, who won't acknowledge feelings of neglect or abandonment, who can't confess that the church we call home is sometimes a place of wilderness for us, an inhospitable and uncultivated place, a place we often feel abandoned and neglected by our church family, then we will have a hard time finding the lost. And if that's the case, our church is in danger of being far from God's heart. I think a church who knows its own lostness is very attractive. This kind of lost church draws others in. Because the lost 
are more comfortable with other lost people. And once the lost are with us, they should be able to see and experience what it means to be found. Because every Sunday in the Eucharist, we celebrate a God who seeks the lost, who finds the lost, who waits for the lost to come home. God's heart is for the lost in all shapes and sizes. The lost can be anyone, our children, grandchildren, relatives, next door neighbor, colleagues. It can be rich and poor, white and non-white, able-bodied and the disabled, the powerful and the powerless, the successful and the not so successful, the healthy and the afflicted. If we recognize our own lostness, we will see the lostness of others and be able to reach out to them to help them find their way home. In many ways, the church needs to think like a search and rescue team. Their motto is, this we do, so others may live. In closing, I say this, all who wander are not lost, but all who are lost, God knows where they're at. God seeks them and waits for them. May we, the church, have eyes to see and ears to hear the lost ones in our midst and be Christ to them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you know the ways we are lost and the ways we are found. We weep over our lostness and we rejoice in our finding. You want us home with you. Give us your heart for the lost, Father, so we can joyfully celebrate with you and the angels when the lost are found. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our service will continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the first crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant and us thy salvation. salvation. O Lord, save the King. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean within our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for today. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 352, Amazing Grace. Him three five two.
please sit or kneel for prayer, whichever is most appropriate and comfortable for you. O Lord God Almighty, who rulest the nations of the earth, we humbly beseech thee to favor, with, with thy favor, to behold our sovereign king, Charles III, that in all things he may be guided, he may be led by thy guidance and protected by thy power. We pray thee also to bless Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Catherine, and we pray for all the royal family as they mourn the loss of their mother, their grandmother, and their great-grandmother. We pray for all the royal family. And you, the wisdom of the governor general of this dominion and the lieutenant governors of the provinces, the legislatures of the commonwealth and the empire, and all who are set in authority, that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavors upon the best and surest foundations that peace and happiness, truth and justice, religion and piety may be established among us for all generations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in the righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, and estate. Praying especially this morning for those who have asked for our prayers, whether for healing, health, or comfort. This morning especially, we pray for Jerry. We pray for Glenn. We pray for Peter. We pray for Verona and Agatha. We pray for Ashton, Reed, and Lloyd. We pray for Ryan and Les. We pray for Wyatt. And especially we pray for those who are known only to you, Lord. And we also pray for those whom we hold close in our own hearts. We pray that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to thy several necessities giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we shall forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, 
who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So before we end this morning, I think there might be a few announcements that I should like to share with you. And if anyone else has any that I miss, please just um, let me know or you can announce them um, yourselves. So uh, there's going to be a vestry barbecue on September 18th, which is next Sunday after worship. Um, the barbecue is the chance to celebrate together before the weather starts to turn. Vestry will provide hamburgers and all the fixings, and we are asking for help with salads and desserts for a potluck. Reverend Nancy will also be blessing the children's backpacks as part of the back-to-school blessing at the service if they wish to bring them with them next Sunday. A warm welcome to our new parish secretary, Molly. She, with her husband and children, recently moved to Swiftkirk from Zimbabwe and come highly qualified. She has begun her training with Veronica and will officially take over the role on September 6th, though she's already been that, in that official role for a while, I guess. Um, please join with us today to meet with her during the worship service or after and and um, their family attends Christ the Redeemer Roman Catholic Parish here in Swift Current so it will be great to, to get to meet them. Um, in an effort to tidy things up around the church it has been asked for everyone to take a look if there's anything that they need to pick up or have used and needs to be put away and please do so if there's anything that belongs to you in the, the church foyer. Um, there had been planned the Bishop's Celebration event on today, September 11th at 5 p.m. at St. Paul's Cathedral, but in view of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the even song of celebration planned for this Sunday at 5 has been cancelled, and I presume that that will take place at some point in the future. Uh, on Tuesdays, the men's coffee group is still meeting at the South Service Tim Hortons at 10 a.m. So if any of you are interested in meeting there at 10 a.m. on Tuesdays, uh, that would be wonderful. And the weekly women's coffee um, takes place here at the church hall on Thursdays at 1.45 p.m. And I think that's all the announcements that are on here. Does anyone have anything else to add to those announcements? Uh, Lois said she made tea and coffee, so let's all stick around and, if you want, have a visit. It would be nice to share some time with you. So, um, Other than that, uh, I think that is everything. Um, it's been wonderful to worship together with you this morning. And we will now have our recessional hymn, which is, oh, I will do the grace first. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn number 492. Sing hallelujah to our God, hymn 492. Please stand. 